Ryan is Rich Keith. It's the Dort Podcast. Ryan Davis. It's the Dort Podcast. Hashtag. It's the Hashtag Dort Podcast. Shut up. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Hashtag Dork. My name is Rich Keefe, joined as always by Davey Eyeballs. He is Raven Vaughn, David, and all hail the King of Ginger Ale. It's Ryan. Davey, Davey, how are you? Oh, I'm so excited. This is pretty great. I'm so excited. So inspired by X-Men 97, which is a show we are watching currently on Disney+, Plus, we thought, you know what? Let's put together a list of some of our favorite things, or as I like to just call them, the best things of 1997 and here's how we're looking at this and you can feel free to play along at home it's not necessarily and some of these will overlap but it's not necessarily hey just look back at 1997 and what were the best things to come out of that year yeah rather try to remember what you were like at that age in that grade and what were your favorite things then so um we have a whole list here dave we're gonna do movies tv shows Music, uh, band songs, wrestlers, steal a smooch, athletes, video video, games, video games. And this is just a coincidence. I'm wearing a jersey from the 90s. 97 is a Damon Stoudemire Raptors jersey. So how do you like that? All right. Also, uh, before I uh, I'll stop talking in a second. 1997 for me, I was 13 years old. This would have been the winter spring of my seventh grade year that summer and then the fall of my eighth grade year see yep yeah, so this is where you and i kind of divert and, and mm-hmm. people kind of like we do present and talk as the, with though we are the same age yes however no richard and i are separated by one grade but almost four years no three three so three yeah so like i you're, you're you 81 just turned four, yeah. yep so I was 16 and I was 16 right. years old, had just gotten my license. And it was my first sophomore year of high school, which right. I got to tell you, looking back, like I went through the list of all the shit that was going on, probably one of the best years of my life in terms of entertainment. Yeah, dude, it's insane. Like looking back at the stuff and I'm trying to remember like, all right, what was the stuff I was super into and so i'm like all right so it's basically middle school so some of my answers and i i I even double checked some of the years on this so some of my answers don't hold me to it some of it might be more 96 some of it might be more 98 like the but like it's for sure that time it's like it's it's, it's, this is middle school keith talking right here yeah (laughs) (laughs) and it was like it's it's ryan davy who had just gotten his license has now had like that taste of freedom oh right and man like this, the stuff I okay. We gotta get it. We gotta uh, talk about this. Right, stuff. Where yeah. do you want you, you lob it out first? Where do you want to? What category do you want to start with? First? Let's just start. Let's start movies. First. Okay. Let's just start okay. there. And again, right. I, I what I'm excited to talk about here is not like you said the what who what one best picture I think that year was like the English Patient or something. I, I don't remember. Yeah. But we're not we're not here to talk about the best because we weren't watching the best movies we weren't watching the best shows or, it was like or, the were fucking, we? <laughs> or, the, or uh, not critically but uh, to us yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. Uh, i'll start this off movie that came out in 97 that you and i both love way ahead of its time spawn spawn way ahead of its time spawn good one you know the way you were setting that up i was like i thought you were going to say one of the ones that was on my list starship troopers oh hell yeah our strip troopers kicked it. It was yeah. chaos. It was it was made for people our age at that time. And you went for Denise Richards, but you stayed for Dina Meyer. <laughs> That's what that movie was about. <laughs> I'm gonna show so one that was in our personal DVD collection when we li- when we lived together, Suicide Kings. Yeah, I don't know if I saw it in 97. But no, that, but we, we definitely had the DVD. So that came sure. out in 97. Oh, it did. But that movie is awesome. So that was that like fantastic. young who's who of Hollywood in that day. Like the yeah. young Jay Moore, a young Jay Moore. Yeah. Uh, Henry Thomas. Uh, Jeremy Sisto. Jeremy Sisto. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Sean, it was a Sean Patrick Flaherty was in that movie yep. too. Yep. Um, and so Christopher Walken. Walken. Yep. Dennis Leary. De- Dennis Leary was killer in that movie. <laughs> so funny. It was kind of uh, a serious movie, but Dennis Leary. Put the, okay, fine. Put it in the bucket. Yep. Then give me the bucket. <laughs> he is good. He was good. 
yeah i talked i i remember talking to dennis leary uh for some interview he did he must have been promoting something and i asked him about suicide kings and he was he loved it it was great yeah i'm sure like he would love to, about that movie like i feel like if you ask an actor about movies they've been in if it's one that right. you've loved that no one not a lot of people really liked Dude, I saw Jeremy Piven. He was he was like finishing up on the Greg Hill show, and I saw Jeremy Piven when he was leaving. And so I introduced myself, and I was like, I started talking about very bad things and like how great how great he was in that movie, and like he was yeah. all about it. So because I'm sure it's not like the most. It's like, hey, dude, you were good in Entourage. He's like, I got it. Yeah, thanks. No, so so speaking of him, so he was in in 1997. One of my to this day, I watch this movie once a month. It's one of my favorite movies. Gross Point Blank. No shit. It's one of my favorite movies. No shit. John Cusack is in just he's the hitman who goes back to his high school reunion. Yeah. Mini driver who's excellent in that movie. And Jeremy Piven plays like his best friend. Mm -hmm. Talk about a guy who got hair. He's like full on losing his hair in this movie <laughs> yeah. in 97 yeah. and somehow yeah. full head of hair today. Looks like a million bucks. You ask me. Yep. He's actually uh, grown more hair. Arguably, so. maybe not even arguably, but the funniest movie to come out in 1997. Because you got to remember, 94 was like the Jim Carrey, like yep. Adam Sandler boom. 97, though, the first Austin Powers. Which Austin Powers was so funny. It was so quotable. It was like you would see it multiple times. It was piss your pants funny, the first one. The first time you saw absolutely. And there was that scene. It was in the beginning. Was that the one with Will Ferrell? Yeah. Number two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he like crashed, like, it smells like almonds. <laughs> like that. That I... Those are That's one great. of those movies I remember watching in the theater and like laughing my ass off mm -hmm. at times. Yeah, it's great. Um, so of the big blockbusters that year that I actually did see in the theater, it was mm -hmm. looking forward to was The Lost World, Jurassic Park 2. Yep. Now, not that it was the greatest movie, but you think about four years earlier, I remember Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, the first one, is probably my most memorable theater going experience mm -hmm. experience ever. And then talking about it, because I went and I saw it with my mom, my sister, my cousins, and like my aunt. We all went and saw it down in Atlanta. And it was like the biggest theater I'd ever been in in my life. And that was 93. So then like for four years, we're talking about like, oh my God, they got to make a sequel. They got to make a sequel. Like they set it up for the sequel, all this stuff. And you got it. It was, it is what it was. But as a, as a kid, you're like, all right, it's fucking di sweet dino action. And then stuff. Didn't like Michael Crichton had to like crank out a book. Like they made him like. Did he not write a book? I thought he wrote. No, both. he wrote Jurassic Park. I don't know if both of them were written. I thought he had in between yeah, the movies. That, so Jurassic Park had been written for like years and then they made yeah, it yeah. into a movie. And then once it they thought it was going to be successful, he oh. like had to crank out like another book. Yeah, that could explain it. So, um, but like other movies, Fifth Element. That was 97. Mm. That was 97, as was Goodwill Hunting. Yes. Yeah, so that I probably definitely didn't see right out of the shoot. One that I did see, though, was not in the theater, because I don't think I would have been allowed to see it in the theater, but as soon as it was available to rent, I remember watching it with my middle school buddies, Private Parts. Yes. And Private Parts is pretty sweet as a 13-year-old <laughs> kid. And it was, I remember seeing, I loved how they started that movie, because I remember seeing on the MTV Music Awards, howard stern doing the fart man thing yes yeah yeah and being like who the hell is this guy because i didn't really listen to like morning radio right. i didn't really know yeah. who he was like who the fuck is this guy yeah and then that's how they started the movie that's that was like how what everyone thought yeah. like who the hell is this well it's funny i was like i was introduced to stern because like my parents would listen to stern and like because he was on remember like he was on bcn for a while he was on bcn and then like but syndicated so he was yeah, well, right. Was like I mean, a, he was on yeah. he was on everywhere, but I'm saying you could hear yeah. it on BCN. So I remember Stern, but then that movie was insane. I remember being like, "This is fantastic! Like, what a great movie! Like, this guy's a good actor." I mean, he's just playing himself. And if and you then, didn't know who Jenna Jameson was at the time, you did yeah. then. Became a man that day watching Private yep. Parts. <laughs> uh, so here's two others that have stuck with me. So yep. the original Scream came out in 1996. I was 12 and too scared to see it, so I didn't see it then. I've told the story in the podcast, but we back in the day had direct TV and they used to have on their pay-per-view channels. You could watch the first five minutes of a movie for yep. free. And then you had to decide whether you wanted to buy it. I watched the first five minutes of scream so many times. And then another, I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. And like, I'm just scared. But then I eventually saw scream 
and then Scream 2 came out in 97. And those were sort of like my gateways into horror movies because I was always such a Freddy cat. And then I saw those, loved them. And also that same year, I remember watching this. Maybe I watched this in eighth grade on tape, but I Know What You Did Last Summer also came yes. out in 97. And so it was like, it was those two or three movies that got me into every single horror movie. I went back and watched like everything once like I got to high school, but middle school, those were, those were my horror movies then. I guess still are really. <laughs> they still are. So they, yeah. They, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, movies were, and again, I feel like we started with movies, which is good, but I feel like that's the worst, the worst part yeah. of this year. Yeah. No, it might be. It's not really, it's not crazy. Like I like the horror movies, um, but that's kind of, you're right. It's not, not amazing do you want to go tv shows let's do it so i mean for, for me like this is i'm watching i know we're going to talk about movies that premiered in 1997 but definitely what i was watching was like seinfeld the seinfeld, simpsons seinfeld i think it was the last year of seinfeld but this for right. sure i remember watching that was like a that was like a family get together watching seinfeld and like friends was like the biggest thing in the world at this yeah point. i probably saw some of that but like i was I was more Seinfeld. I was still watching The Simpsons. I forget what year that was. That might have been, what would that have been, like their eighth season? Eighth or ninth season, yeah. I was still watching Simpsons. It was the last year of X-Men, the animated series. So I was clearly watching that, mm -hmm. wrapping that bad boy up. Uh, and then two that I believe debuted this year, South Park and yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, so big year for Mrs. Davy, but like so um yeah, South Park debut and again, I didn't I remember watching it and throughout the year watching that show get better and better and better and better. You know, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. First, remember the first episode was like aliens and cows and you're just like this is kind of fun. Was that the start yeah, of the swearing, but then start then Mr. Hanky yeah, like it was like okay. Now we're starting to like pick up steam a little bit here, and like well, it was just like do? it was like yeah, the animation was like you were, you had to like kind of get used to it at first, but it was just like so over the top the stuff that they were saying. But it was another, like, oh yeah, um, another sneaky good show that premiered this year, King of the Hill. Oh, that was ninety seven. Yeah, so good animated shows. Yeah, that year, good adult yeah. animated shows, which that show went on way longer than you think it did. Yeah. Oh yeah, it ran a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So there was some. So HBO did their Spawn animated series too this oh, year. That's it. Which um, I think you can find somewhere. It's probably on Max, but you get um, that was actually really good. And it, they told a lot of the story from was it Sam and Twitch, where like the the detectives. Yeah, so they told a lot of it like from their perspective, which was actually right. really cool. Right. Um, Tenacious D, that show. Oh, really? That was ninety seven. I, read, I, read, I no, so it it was one of those things like they it aired in ninety seven. They like kind of canceled it and mm -hmm. then brought it back. I remember like, watching like it when season. it came back. I remember watching yeah. it then. Yeah, I love it. I remember it. watching it. I remember watching it one night thinking, like, who the fuck are these guys? And it was like a fever dream. Like, I was trying to explain mm -hmm. to someone the name of the show, and they're like, yeah, that's not a real show. I'm like, no, I swear <laughs> to God, it is. Like, I, um, and then up. there are two shows that I watched religiously that also premiered in 1997 behind the music, VH1's behind the music. Oh, wow. And pop up video. Oh, pop up video was good. Yeah. yeah. I would just watch that all day. I would watch that all day. I mean, VH1 had like the shittier music, but. Oh, yeah. So 97, I was probably watching TRL then too. That was definitely on. Oh, you was, absolutely watch TRL. Watching, I was watching Carson Daly crush yeah. it on TRL. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, it was just the eve of like the boy band era. Like they, I think yes. Instinct's first single came out in 97. The album didn't come out to 98. Yeah. Um, But yeah, this is like, like was that whole Girls, thing. Right? Spice yeah. Girls 90, was 90, a big 97. All right, what about uh, speak, uh, easy segue, music. So bands I, or specific songs, what jumps out to you from this year? What jumps out at me this year, Richard, and I think I've told the story in the pod, this is the year my CD case got stolen because I'd have it in my car, right? I had a 200 CD wallet stolen. So I had to go through, remember the Columbia like record, you get like 20 CDs yeah. for like a penny. Yeah, so I yeah. signed everyone in my family up just to get my CDs back. Richard, when I tell you that this year, other than 1994, 94 is probably like my ultimate music year in my lifetime. 97 is a huge, like, number two. And I'm so excited right. to, like, tell you about all the shit that yep. I bought okay. from Columbia Record House 
Lay it on Albums me. include. Yes. One with a bullet. OK Computer. Radiohead. Right. Homework. The first Daft Punk album. OK. Around the Fur. Deftones. Deftones. No oh, shit. Incubus. First uh, Science. Their very first like full length studio album. A lot of EPs before that. Was New Skin on Science? New Skin was on Science. Oh, I yeah. know you like that one. I like New Skin. Uh, Wu Tang Forever. Oh right, that was a double album, right? That was a oh my, yeah, double album. Three yeah. Eleven's Transistor, which is their best album, and I don't, I am not here for the Three Eleven hate. They're <laughs> not, they're good, and <laughs> this is their best studio album. You know, funny, uh, it's the only, uh, it's the only Three Eleven CD I bought. Was this and one? God damn, it has beautiful disaster on it. Yeah. Stealing happy hours. Huh? Applied science. Like this is a fucking good album. And I don't want to hear. It. Huh? Um, I don't any hate for me on it. It's fine. But what do you? I mean, I'm I'm hogging this whole thing. Prodigy. Prodigy kicked ass. All right. So for me, I was probably listening to um, the Aquabats in '97. Yeah. Uh, it was super rad. I also was for sure listening to Insane Clown Posse because. They had already, this was a middle school band. I still, every once in a while, will put it on just to hear it. But the Great Malenko came out this year, which is their best album <laughs> that they've ever made. Great Malenko kicks ass. It also followed uh, Riddle Box, which I would highly recommend. Now, here's another thing. It was probably two years prior to this, but it was still what I was listening to at this time. I was at a family get-together, like uh, all my cousins and everything, and my cousin, who was like five years older than me, we were out playing like, mm -hmm. I don't even know what, football or laser tag or something. And he had like a little boom box and he was playing his music. Two songs that I can vividly remember hearing and it changed my life. It changed how I enjoyed music. One was Blind by Korn. Which, 94, by the way. 94, but I was still raw. I was but rocking. Saying, that's what, 94? Like that came oh, out yeah, 94. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah corn. So at this point, corn uh, and life is peachy was also out by mm -hmm. this point. But so I listened to corn blind and uh, bullet in the head by rage against the machine. Hell yeah. I remember hearing those songs and like literally my mind just exploded. I was like, this is music. This is the stuff I like. Yeah. So um, evil empire, I believe came out in 97 or maybe 96, but either way I was listening. I was for sure listening to it in 97. I'm gonna say that came out in '95. Oh, maybe okay. Either way, I'm saying I'm, I'm trying to think back to what my and at this point '97, I probably only had the thin CD book, and it was probably like '98, '99 where I had to buy yeah. the bigger one. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember what ones were in the thin one, and I think Evil Empire, Corn, but then also Silly Goose stuff like Aquabats. Oh, and <laughs> uh, and Dude Ranch by Blink yep. One Eighty Two. It didn't come out in '97, but I was definitely listening to it a lot in '97. Someone said it did, it did. Josh said it did come out in 97. Oh, Dude my Ranch. bad. Oh, so if yeah. it did come out in 97, then I was listening to it the year it came out. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's my favorite of all their albums. Now, I will say, too, that like these albums I listed were like transformative that like changed the way I listened to music because there was some I was very much in my Dave Matthews era oh, at yeah, this yeah. time. Sure. Yeah. And so like you had shit like Guster's first album, G Love and Special Sauce, Ben Harper, like I said, uh, Ben Folds Five's first album came out the song they had like brick on it and stuff and a bunch of other cool songs oh i yeah, love yeah. that shit mm -hmm. elliot smith either or right on the mm -hmm. off of uh the goodwill hunting they get miss misery was is uh right no was shit. In goodwill hunting yeah so yeah so i mean this I for like me it. this is a very important year i like yeah, it in 97 all right wrestlers 97 was an interesting time in wrestling because at this point, it's still like Rocky Maivia. It's like you don't have the rock yet. You don't really have like Steve Austin's fighting. I want to say he won King of the Ring maybe in 96, but he wasn't like what he is now. Like I wouldn't say Attitude Era was in full swing. I think it like, was just it, starting, right? Yes, it was definitely just starting because you had like the NWO was a thing. Yes. But wrestling was kind of weird. I feel like 97, it was still probably guys like Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, those are probably the biggest stars of the time. So, like, for me, my favorites, I, I always liked Chris Jericho, even before he was on the top. I thought Jericho was great when he got time on, on Nitro and WCW. 
I liked Scott Hall. I preferred Razor Ramon, but he was Scott Hall at this point. Yep. And I also liked Raven quite a bit because that's when they started that Raven's flock thing. And he looked like a guy out of like a Seattle grunge band. And he just had like all those guys <laughs> following him around. But I thought Raven was pretty, pretty good. And I think um, this for me, this was the, at the time. And again, I had a little bit more freedom than you. So we would, yeah. we would go to a friend's house and watch ECW. Mm. Cause ECW was on like Telemundo at like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and they, that was some of the crazy shit. So I remember like Taz and like Rob yeah. Van Dam, Rob Van Dam, which is well, around the time. Yeah. Yeah. That that started happening for me. Yeah. It was no the R, R Von D was, it said R, R Van Dam. It was Ron Von Don. Ron Von Don. And yeah, that, no, that, I like that, that. Yeah. So yeah, that was good. who else? I'm trying to think of like who are they at? Like, um, well, like ECW. It was like Sabu. It was like Tommy Dreamer. It was Sandman. Oh, the Sandman. Oh, my Ugly God. Boys. But I don't think like Edge. Like I really liked Vampire Edge. Was that then, or was he like more like '98? Like I feel like a lot of I these think guys that was the, the Brood. Year. Was that Brood? the Brood? I think Brood was yeah. more '98. I think so too. Um, but like I'm looking at the list. I read this article. Like who was wrestling at this time? Like the British Bulldog, uh, Randy yeah. Savage. They were all still wrestling. They were like phasing out, but like they were still names back then. Like that yeah. seems to me like this. It's got to be that like cusp year like attitude took over i think i so like 98 99 is like all even like the 2000 is all yeah, attitude era i i believe in the uh, diehard wrestling fans would know better than me but i believe wrestlemania so that would have been wrestlemania 13 in 97 yeah and the first time the rock and stone cold main evented a wrestlemania together was wrestlemania 15 so you had to wait yes. like another couple of years until like those guys were at like their height together and you'll remember this that um little known fact about the davy family this was the year i think 97 to like 2000 my father actually worked for the wwe Sorry. um he was a software developer and he came up with this thing they packaged it with i think it was wrestlemania it was the Insight rawpedia we made like an insight an interactive like encyclopedia of like yeah. all these wrestlers uh -huh. um and had like video clips and like all that was like the one thing he did like software developing um but he worked for the wwe so what would happen was in order to do this they would send him so like monday night raw would happen and that this was even before smackdown right so like yeah might have monday been. Night, oh yeah probably monday yeah, night yeah, raw, yeah monday night raw would happen on monday and on Tuesday, we would get overnighted all the entire episode, no commercials on VHS, which is the way to watch so my it. dad. Yeah. And like he would remember he would come and deliver. Yeah. Like he, all the pay-per-views, like he would just give them to me. That so great. we never had to buy it. That was the best. Like the next day. It was awesome. Yeah, it's good. Um, all right. Let's go with again. Uh, we're going to go steal a smooch candidates. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what Cons a year. Consensual smooches, obviously um i have a i have a small number i have three but i feel like it is a can't miss list okay what are your okay give me the three that you're like can't right. miss so the two that are kind of obvious now this is and the not now this is for the year right no, no no for the year as as a 13 year old as a 16 year old yeah and for you a 16 and for me a 13 year old it was because of I know what you did last summer combined with uh Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it would be Sarah Michelle Geller and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Those were like the two, like like the, the the two at the top, I would say, for during middle school time for just about everybody. But also 1997, Ryan, was the year that Tyra Banks was on the cover of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, which is the greatest cover in the history of the event. And mm -hmm. so Tyra Banks has to be on the list for that year. And I will that's on my list for that year. Now, again, this is this is at a very pivotal, critical time for me in terms of like sure. steal a smooch. So I'm trying to like get myself yeah. in that headspace. Okay. I remember for my 16th birthday, which was June of 97. Yes. Um, one of my best friends at the time got me that it was Janie McCarthy's Playmate of the Year cover poster. Yeah. Yep. Where she was like, it's like a pink bed and it's like a top down shot um unbelievable so yes. let's put that jenny mccarthy on my list and believe it or not i'm not embarrassed to say it i had the biggest crush on jerry hallowell aka ginger spice good one that, that was like my absolute real good like, one it was the 
it wasn't the wannabe video. It was the next one. It was like that. What was that song? Um, I can, I know the video. They're like in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. Like, I say you'll be better. there or something like that. I can't. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the song. But um, oh my god! Like seeing Great. that, I was like, yeah, wow. Yep, she's a good one. That's a good call. Carmen Electra at this time. Yep. Oh my god. Yep. For sure. I don't know. I'm just I'm like <laughs> cruising a list right now. I can't. I'm just gonna throw Pamela Anderson, obviously. Yep. Ira Banks, obviously, obviously, uh, obviously. Uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, like you said. Yep. Gwen Stefani. Like, yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Front sure. of not at that point. Yeah. Hey, sorry. I'm getting ahead of oh, myself, dude. Don't don't worry about it. All Sable. Right, Sable. Oh, and Sunny. <laughs> Sunny's not doing great. Yeah. yeah. No. No. No, she's not. No. So no, let's uh. Video games. All right. First of all, video game systems. I feel like in 97, everybody was probably playing the PS1 or the N64. Maybe this was the year of 64, man. Were you still playing Sega? Maybe. No. Maybe. No. I think Sega at that time had, I think the Dreamcast, they they put out like the Sega Saturn, um, which bombed. So I feel like it was N64 and PS1. That was it, right? That was like if you were gaming, you were gaming, right? And PC, PC, um, obviously. But think this year, in the same calendar year for Nintendo 64, GoldenEye, Star Fox 64, Mario Kart 64. Yeah, that's um, it. That's the game. Like, that's, that's it. I mean, that's like, I, I think Ocarina of Time came out the next year. I think they came out in 98. But Got it. Um, that's, just, that's just Nintendo. Right. If you want oh, to talk so- to the PlayStation boys. Yikes. the ps boys so this was uh and i mentioned this on the podcast but it, was, it always worked out perfect me and uh shark growing up because i had the nintendo and then i went from nintendo to sega and then he got the super nintendo right and then he got the n64 well i'll why i got the playstation so we were always kind of alternating so like whatever the good game was one of us had it and to me on playstation at that time uh, the original playstation i think twisted metal 2 was probably the game of games. I feel that like was I the game. That, that game was so good. good. Yeah. Um. But then you had like on PlayStation Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah. Which that's one of the best games ever. Right. Um. Tekken Three. Not ninety seven. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Dude, there's no chance we were playing that game as sophomore, or I was a sophomore. We were playing Tekken Tag. No, we were playing Tekken 3. Tekken 3 was the game, sophomore year. Tekken 3 release date, March 20, 1997. I don't believe you. Is it's that true. the arcade? Could very well be the arcade. Okay. Because I feel like I remember... Yes, it was it was released in the arcade in 97. I remember playing it at Dream Machine at the Pheasant okay. Lane Mall. Oh, yeah. Um, it was released on PlayStation 98. Oh, that's even earlier than I thought. Because I remember playing freshman year at St. Paul's, still yep. playing Tekken 2. And then it was sophomore year playing Tekken 3 but maybe somebody just was like a year behind getting it we well, was also i remember your freshman year in high school is the year that the playstation 2 came out right and no one That's... could get it and then no, you got it for like christmas or something no but i didn't get it until junior year it wasn't out because we played we played ps1 yeah. in high school in 99 and 2000 games. you're missing a game that we played more i dare i say more than tekken alice PC game no but that's a good one um <laughs> worms like two. Oh, uh, worms two, dude worms worms two. Yes. Worm, worms. <laughs> worms two is a great game i, I love you want to talk it, worms two <laughs> i would say caused more arguments and more yeah. fights than any other game combined worms two is one of the all-time great games especially for that specific setup, nobody has that setup where you're like all playing on one kid's PC of eight guys hogging on like what, like taking oh, turns yeah. getting taking the computer turns. on one and person's PC. I remember, I forget who it was. Like you could just guarantee that somebody, I, I forget who it was. It might have been Shark, might have been Nooner, might have been, I don't know who, was fucking pinpoint with the goddamn super sheep. Oh, I think you had to like aim with like the keys and just like motherfucker. Like I was just so pissed when they picked it. I want to say noon was like exceptional at that game. Like I think we were all like good. He was like he was next level. And you and your fucking concrete donkeys just taking out half the map. (laughs) 
Donkey Donkey. Had we the outlaw. We had like unlimited super banana. Well, we also like souped up the weapons too. It's like super super banana. Then you do like the Ming vase. Then you would do <laughs> that thing, would just blow up the guy. Uh, the best you just poke someone off the thing. Just, just yeah, poke them off the side. That was insulting. I remember. I speaking of uh, the albums, I was the Wu Tang Worms because you, you had Wu Tang Worms. Have, yeah, you had to have like up to eight names, I think. And I know there was and, nine of them, but still. And mine was obscure Simpsons characters. Yeah, that's good. I had Professor John Frank. TJ O'Pooter Toot. <laughs> Spud you, Cletus and was it? I forget Cletus, the slack jawed yokel. Yeah. I forget what everybody else had. And then I think Noon, who was like the best at the game, just had like random names. Like he just was like, I'll let the computer decide. I'm like, what the fuck? Like this is like the best part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just random. Like I don't care. put more thought into that. Yeah. Um fucking games, man. I'm trying. Oh, oh Symphony of the Night, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is our, the to, to me the best Castlevania game ever made. Oh, Still no replayable shit. to this day. Yeah. First Diablo, cool. first Fallout. First Diablo, first Fallout. Wow. Yeah. Oh, shit. That long yeah. ago, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, they were like the first Fallout was like it was like Diablo. It was like a top down game. Oh, it wasn't like, very good. Like the first Grand Theft Auto. Right. That also came out in ninety seven. I didn't okay. mention it, but I don't like to mention that game. It those no, didn't get good. Grand Theft Auto three was like the in my mind is like the first of the Grand Theft Autos. Yeah. 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 But I want to say, yeah. was it was it like WW or no WCW Nitro? I forget what the wrestling game was. It wasn't bad for like it was like NWO like World Tour or something like that. It's one of those. It because yeah. like then a couple years later is where you get like No Mercy cool. and like WrestleMania 2000. But like prior to that, there was like a couple like halfway decent games. Um did you see that thing? Someone it was like a meme recently. They're like 97, like video game graphics like golden eye and like uh wrestlemania 2000 like <laughs> these graphics can't get it's so realistic like can't get any better than this i love it yeah and just like oh it's, they're it's so block, bad it's just like block a block yeah it's awesome <laughs> yeah. It looks wow. like a dire straits video <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, what else? so i was trying to think of what else we got here oh we batman and robin came out this year too it did it did i definitely saw that when it came out i oh, definitely like, saw that <laughs> um so th that's the difference. That was sort of like as a kid, most movies are great. And I remember watching Batman Forever and being like, this is pretty good. Like, I, I Jim Carrey's crazy, like, whatever. Tommy Lee Jones is doing a lot of yelling, but like, okay, I, I thought Batman Forever was decent. And then even Batman and Robin as a kid, you're like, no, this isn't. I remember watching it and be like, this is dumb. Yeah. Like, I want to like it's... this, but it's really dumb. I want to yeah. tell people that like this was worth it, but awful. Uh, this was, I'm looking at spots now. Yeah, what do you have for spots? The Patriots lost the Super Bowl. Yeah. They, well, they got absolutely pumped. But the score is 35 21, but that was not a close game. No, because, well, yeah, because like that's always weird because it was the 96 season, but then the 97 right. Super Bowl, they lost to the Packers. Desmond Howard running kickoffs back. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, real quick, if we're doing athletes back then, I remember I loved the Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, Sonics. Mm hmm. Uh, was this I the was, last year of the uh, Bulls? They won it in 98. Yeah. They went 96, 97, 98. So the last ride would have been 98. You still had like Barry Sanders. Like obviously was was great. I was always a big Gary Sheffield fan. He's one of my favorite. You were a big Gary I Sheffield fan. I love Gary Sheffield. And he was killing it for the Marlins then. They won the World Series that year. Um, yeah. I'm good. looking at all the sports right now. Golf. Tiger Woods won the Masters. I think it was his first Masters. Oh, that sounds right. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to find uh, handball. We don't care about that. Hoss racing. <laughs> Who won the hosses? Uh, Dominic Hasek won the heart trial. I think. Yeah. Josh the chat says uh, Tyson bit Holyfield's ear off in '97. Oh yeah, I watched that live. No shit. Yeah, I was so bummed. I was the biggest. I'm the biggest Mike Tyson fan. Like I, I think I was as a kid. Like I, that was one of my favorite. <laughs> If you did like a Mount Rushmore of like my favorite athletes growing up, Mike Tyson's one Tyson? of them. Bo Jackson, um, Cam yeah. Neely, and Good list. I'm trying to think of who else. Darren Mike Bragg, Green Mike Greenwell, no, <laughs> the Gator. <laughs> yeah, um, the Red Wings won the Stanley Cup. Okay, which is great. You they know, went whatever. back to back, didn't they? They did. Um, yeah. but that was like those years with that. That was was that them with the the fucking avalanche was that oh 
That was good. Which, if you haven't seen that 30 for 30, That's, oh yeah. my gosh. That, that was awesome. Those guys so hated. good. That was a blast. Yeah. That was the last time hockey was like fucking good. Yeah, they were mad. Yeah, all right, well, there you go. That's 97. Time. So when you're watching X Men 97, just take yourself back to the to those times. Let's get I could talk about this forever. I I we should do more of these every this single movie. year. Every year. <laughs> every year. Every year. Ever. We're gonna do. No, if we ever did a 94, like that would blow your socks off. Like what happened? You were a little. You were a tyke then, but dude, I was 10. But I have a lot of memories then because I remember just watching ace ventura and dumb and dumber and quoting ace ventura like thinking i was a pet detective for a whole year i was obnoxious i think i, I think either 10 or 11 we got our first like family video camera and i would just go around like filming people and saying nonsense like i was <laughs> spouting shit 10 was great i love 10 uh 94 yeah um but all right, right? Yeah, let us know what you guys thought. What were some of the stuff we missed or what stuff did you agree with from 97 at Dork Podcast, Twitter, Instagram, emails, anytime, dorkpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, next week episodes, TBD. And then we got some TV shows that are kind of winding down. So we'll have to look at back at those, yeah. see uh, where Shogun is at, Bad Batch, X-Men 97, and uh, see what else is coming around the corner. Any final thoughts, Ryan? No, I, I, like, I, I you got to stop me now because I'll be, it'll be another hour. I know you got to finish WrestleMania, but this is going to take. Oh, no, me. I got, I, I got yeah. WrestleMania paused, so I'm going to go finish the <laughs> mania. But uh, good stuff, Dave, and uh, thanks everybody for listening. And we will uh, tell a friend, tell a dork about the podcast, and then we'll talk to you next week.